Hi guys, White Witch 110 here. I'm in my little secret room. This is my new candlestick. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Tonight I will be giving you more of the historic haunts. And the first one is Todd Morden Mills and Haleywhale House. Haleywhale House. House. That's a tongue twister. Now, the mill was a lumber mill in the 1790s. And it is now a historic site. It was in 1820. There was a brewery next to the mill. Which, okay, was run by the Helliwale family. Now, in 1940, the mill was a small German prisoner of war camp. In 1930 to 1967, so I don't know how all that went, there were horse riding schools there. Odd combination, but, you know. So... The first apparition is of an old woman who is seen and seems very friendly and she walks through the theater late at night. There have been loud noises of furniture and props being moved from a loft space. Staff working in sound booth observed a gray form pass their window overlooking the stage 20 feet above the ground. A historical guide spoke of Lady of the House died at childbirth. Two years later, son died in the mill accident. He fell into machinery. <clears throat> into machinery. Now there was one staff member who went to get a broom to clean up and she was using her flashlight in the house, and it went off. She quickly gathered the broom from the kitchen and started going away when she heard a female voice. It was speaking low, and she thought it was to a child, but she couldn't make out what was being said, and that it was unusually cold within the room. Another woman was arguing with her boyfriend when she looked up to the window and seen a woman's face. That was that one. Now, the Fairmont Royal York Hotel. It was uh, constructed in 1927 and opened in 1929. 1,363 rooms, four restaurants on 28 floors. At the time it opened, it was one of the tallest buildings in Toronto. A former employee hung himself on the 19th floor staircase. The reason is unknown. Staff report strange sounds, screaming, and loud footsteps when, cl when climbing stairs. When checking cameras, nothing is found to explain it. Now, staff has said, have said that they felt they were being watched going down the stairs. The eighth floor spirit... You feel you're not alone. Some staff refuse to go on that floor during the midnight shift. Technicians report equipment failure and strange malfunctions. Now, a family stayed on the eighth floor. They reported the elevator doors repeatedly opening and closing. An alarm going off on the Saturday in the room next door for 30 minutes. The thing is, there was no guest room located beside them there. 
electronic key would not allow them entry to their room. And their 10-year-old daughter saw shadows moving in the hotel room. She also told her mother she felt something by her bed. Another Saturday, when they were there, at 7 a.m., the alarm clock went on again from the guest room that isn't there. This made them feel mildly uneasy, but they didn't feel that they were in any danger. That freaked me out. Another guest felt electricity going through her body while falling asleep, which woke her up. And each time she went to go to sleep, she would feel the sensation. Then she felt she was being lifted off the bed. The following night, the same thing happened. Now the 17th floor has three rooms, 37, 38, and 39, where a hazy figure has been seen by the elevator, and it would sound as though it was moving, but... Boo -boo. But when the doors open, the elevator actually had moved, and this went on for 15 minutes. So the people in these rooms... Yes, sir? Wow. Well, are you coming in? Wow. What does that mean? Wow. Mow. Well, come in. You're allowed to come in. He loves his mommy. Wow. You love your mommy? Yes, you do. With you, boo. He's being a bum. Okay, he's going to go see his father. Now, a friend of one of the staff reported children running in the hallway at 1 a.m. And on the third night, at 3 a.m., he peered through the, the spy hole and saw a gray-haired man in a waistcoat. When he went out, wasn't there. Now there's another one. The Old Mill Inn and Spa in Toronto. And it is also a Canadian heritage site. The Spa Mill is from 1793. And it now has 45 rooms and 13 suites. It formerly was the Old Mill Tea Garden in 1914. Big band dances were held there in the 20s. And it is now an inn and a spa. The finest inn and spa. Now in June, in June 2008, at 10.30 p.m., a woman reported having missed her bus a woman and her boyfriend the woman uh, I'm, okay so they decided to walk the property of the mill because they had missed their bus there was a street light at the bridge that kept turning on and off they walked for an hour then turned to go back to the station now the boyfriend noticed two people he stopped right in his tracks and asked her why they were in white then he then he commented it looked like they were going to jump she looked up and seen them as well they were a pale white the street light turned off and they disappeared Now, though, they say that the woman was in a nightgown and the man was in a suit with a dress coat. Now, a woman with long black hair and a white flowy dress has been seen on the property. So maybe that was her. Who knows? I don't know. So out of practice.
practice with this. Okay, the story tonight is Stones. There was a little known Victorian home in the center of Ottawa. An unsuspecting place. Behind it is a park that was once a cemetery. They claim you can sense the dead among the trees. And on an evening with no moon, their spirit lights can be seen walking a forgotten path. In the fall, an explosion of color overshadows an otherwise graying landscape. The home itself is constructed of red brick from the, 19, from the 1890s. Panels in the modest windows have imperfections of handmade glass that enhances its charm. I came upon the house by chance on a walk one afternoon, but it is not the subject of my story. My story begins and ends in the woods on either side of the path. From that first walk through them, I could feel I was being watched, and it wasn't by the living. It was as if spirit was floating within the trees at shoulder height, waiting for me to acknowledge them. It became a regular routine for me to take this path part way along. On a rainy afternoon, my decision to... Ooh, my decision to follow to the end did not disappoint. I think spirit is making itself known here. Yes, it is. Thank you. What I found at the end of the path was the remains of a cemetery. Many headstones still marked the owner's resting place. As I walked among the stones, I called out their names. I felt a sense of joy telling them they were not forgotten. In the far corner, there stood a brick building. I carefully made my way towards it. The door was ajar, so I peeked inside. I used my flashlight on my phone to light the interior. My mouth dropped open at the sight. I was sure every gravestone from the park was housed inside these walls. My question now was, where were the bodies? Were they still there? I recalled being told that caskets would surface during the spring flooding. My understanding had been the bodies were interned in a neighboring cemetery, but I was doubting it now. I began to count. When I reached 50, I stopped. I was sure the bodies were never moved. Earth and grass covered them now with a large gazebo. I felt an uncontrollable sadness overcome me. Why would the city do something like this? It began to make sense to me. None of those in the park were content. But what could I do? Contacting the city, I was assured all bodies had been moved to the new cemetery with new headstones. I really didn't believe them. Each day, I took time to walk the path, even in the snow. As time went on, the presence in the woods lessened. I spent time with the old gravestones and surviving cemetery. I spoke to them and tracked down relatives. Each one came to pay respects. Month by month, the spirit lights lessened until only a couple continued to re be reported. Each day without fail, I visit and I talk to them. The atmosphere has settled and all seems happy. So that is for this evening. And obviously I'd like to thank Spirit for dropping by, for giving me this lovely flame, which did aid in my reading. So it is, as Halloween is very fast approaching, it is a time for us to think back to our ancestors, 
to our loved ones as I have a photo of my parents here. Well, maybe it's them here. And give thanks for have ha having having had them in my life and all that they gave to me and instilled in me. And I know mother would be freaking out to know I'm a witch, but if it's positive, that's a good thing. But I do feel them and it's comforting. So remember ancestors, talk to them, invite them to spend time with you. And until tomorrow evening, sleep tight and ciao for now.